Come join me on my second channel, Jaguar Gator 8, where we'll talk all things college football. New video drops every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the latest video. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of some of the greatest rivalries in the NFL, there are quite a few rivalries that you think of. The Packers against the Bears. The Cowboys against the Eagles. The Jaguars against winning. But odds are, one of the first rivalries that came to mind was this one right here. The Pittsburgh Steelers against the Baltimore Ravens. Usually, this is the battle for supremacy in the AFC North. The two teams are consistently good, and consistently near the top of the AFC. To say that the Steelers and Ravens hate each other would be an understatement. There's a reason that we'll see the Steelers and Ravens against each other in prime time every year. And you could make the argument that it is the greatest rivalry in the NFL in the 21st century. They've met four times in the postseason. They played regular season games that knocked the loser out of the playoff hunt. And they've done just about everything. Former Steelers wide receiver Heinz Ward said it best when he said on the rivalry, The coaches hate each other. The players hate each other. The feeling's mutual. They don't like us, and we don't like them. There's no need to hide it. They know it, and we know it. So why do I bring this up? Because we were almost deprived of one of the greatest rivalries in the NFL. Because it almost never happened. Because if then Baltimore Ravens owner Art Modell had his way, the Ravens and the Steelers wouldn't be in the same division. Heck, they wouldn't even be in the same conference. In 2000, Modell volunteered to have his Ravens switch to the NFC East. And to say that, if his request was granted, this would have changed NFL history forever, would be a massive understatement. This is the story of how the Baltimore Ravens almost joined the NFC East. Before I talk about Modell's comments, which might seem incredibly bizarre on the surface, we need some context to understand the landscape of the NFL, both at the time of the incident and even going back 30 or so years. By the turn of the millennium, the NFL had a problem on their hands, if you want to even call it a problem. The good news was that they were going to add a 32nd team, as the Houston Texans were going to join the NFL in 2002, giving Houston a much-deserved team after they lost the Oilers roughly half a decade prior. Aside from the fact that expansion is a good thing, because it's more money and more games, it just seemed to make the most sense to have a 32-team league. The 31-team format that the NFL had at the time was incredibly awkward, with teams having to take Week 1 and Week 17 buys, and the AFC Central having 6 teams, which messed up the scheduling pretty badly. 32 is a nice even number that allows you to split the league evenly across 8 divisions of 4 teams each. Outside of fans from Los Angeles who were hoping that LA would get the 32nd team, no one was upset about this expansion. 32 teams was the way to go. The bad news, however, was figuring out the logistics of doing this. At the time, the AFC had 16 teams, and the NFC had 15 teams. So you might be thinking to yourself that this shouldn't be a problem, right? Just put the Texans in the NFC, and boom, you have two even conferences. Well that wasn't going to work. And the reason why that wasn't going to work had to do with television contracts. This wouldn't be the case today, because beginning in 2023, every game is going to be a free agent, meaning that you could play on CBS or Fox without any affiliation to conference whatsoever. But back in 2000, at the time of this, the network designations were extremely strict. There was no such thing as cross-flexing between networks. With the exception of nationally televised games on ESPN and ABC, if the visiting team was in the AFC, then the game was on CBS. And if the visiting team was in the NFC, then the game was on Fox. No exceptions whatsoever. By putting the Texans in the NFC, it would mean that 14 of their 16 games would be on Fox. And there's one very powerful team and one very powerful figure that would have prevented that from happening in a heartbeat. Because by doing this, if the Texans and Cowboys play at the same time, you're splitting Texas up in terms of which game they get to see. No one's happy in this scenario. The Cowboys are unhappy because they lose a ton of television viewers, and a ton of their fans won't be able to see them play regularly anymore because of the Texans. And the Texans are unhappy because their television market is probably going to be restricted to Houston and any adjacent city, because most affiliates in Texas, if given the option to show the Texans or the Cowboys, will show the Cowboys. Excluding the Browns-Ravens debacle, this was the only time in NFL history 
that there was absolutely no consideration given to what conference an expansion team in the post-merger era would join. The Buccaneers and the Seahawks split time between the AFC and NFC over their first two seasons, and the Jaguars were seriously being considered as an NFC team, with the Panthers being seriously considered as an AFC team. If you don't believe me on that, back in 2016, I bought a mini helmet of Super Bowl 29 from a retro sports store that sold things for $10. And when I looked at the back of the box, lo and behold, the Panthers were in the AFC Central and the Jaguars were in the NFC West. Again, usually there is consideration and debate for what conference an expansion team will join, but no such debate or consideration was given for the Texans. It was a done deal. They were going to play in the AFC, just like the Oilers did, because Jerry Jones would raise all sorts of hell if they played in the NFC. But now, this raises a problem, because you can't have 17 teams in the AFC and 15 teams in the NFC. I mean, you could. MLB had 16 teams in the National League and 14 in the American League for a long period of time. It just makes you look really stupid and messes up the whole schedule. This meant that someone was going to have to change conferences. Someone was going to have to make the switch to go from the AFC to the NFC to even out the numbers. That raises the ultimate question. Who was going to be the one to do it? Well, Art Modell immediately threw his hat into the ring because he announced to the NFL, I'll volunteer his tribute and said that he would love to move the Baltimore Ravens to the NFC East. Why did Modell do this? Why did he volunteer to switch conferences? Well, let's go back a bit to the big realignment of the NFL after the merger in 1970. Going into the merger, you had 16 teams in the NFL and 10 teams in the AFL. They were two completely separate leagues, so there wasn't really a problem with having uneven numbers. But when the two leagues merged, you couldn't exactly have one conference, the NFC, have 16 teams, and another conference, the AFC, have 10 teams. The TV networks would throw a fit, especially since cross-flexing didn't exist, because one network would have more games than another. The teams in the NFC would throw a fit as well, because their odds of making the playoffs were significantly worse than if they were in the AFC, where there are fewer teams. You would have had a 25% chance of making it in the NFC, but a 40% chance in the AFC, and that's not fair. You had to even out the conferences into two conferences of 13 teams each meaning that three teams were going to have to make the switch to go from the NFL, or the NFC, to the AFL, or the AFC. And these negotiations were ugly and long. Things got so bad that the final realignment plan heading into the 1970 season was determined by having Thelma Elkier, who was Commissioner Pete Rozelle's secretary, draw a realignment plan out of an envelope. At the time of this, Modell was the owner of the Cleveland Browns one of the three teams that wound up moving from the NFL to the AFC, alongside the Baltimore Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he went through that horrible, drawn-out process. Heck, Modell wasn't budging without conditions of his own. He said that the only way he would switch leagues or conferences was if the Steelers moved with him, and if he could be in the same division with Cincinnati. As Modell said back in 1969 when the move was announced, quite bluntly, I would not move unless the Steelers moved. Of the three owners part of those moves, two of them were dead by 2000. Carol Rosenblum, the owner of the Colts, died in 1979. And Art Rooney, the owner of the Steelers, died in 1988. Modell was the only one who was there that still remembered what that process was like. And he didn't want to go through with it again. So he volunteered, partially to make the process easier. It's almost like the family of five that goes to an amusement park, and there's only four seats in the car for the roller coaster, so someone's going to have to ride alone. We're assuming in this hypothetical scenario that you can't go with a 3-2 split. At the end of the day, you're all going to be getting on the same ride and getting to enjoy it. So someone just bites the bullet to prevent any heated arguments or prevent any awful scenarios from happening. That was kind of what Modell's thought process had to be like here, even if he never publicly admitted it. In his eyes, he went through it before, and he can go through it again, especially if the alternative is a long, drawn-out meeting where negotiations are tense, and where everything comes to a stalemate. But on top of that, Modell had very valid and legitimate reasons for wanting the Ravens to join the NFC East. As he said, I think going into the National Football Conference would sort of be a homecoming for me, and I would enjoy it very much. We have no solid entrenched rivalries, or traditional teams we play. 
I don't mind moving because we can start a new relationship, if it'll help matters any. Now on one hand, I find it kind of laughable that he said that the Ravens didn't have any solid entrenched rivalries, as I can think of literally the entire city of Cleveland who would disagree with that statement. But the rest of his point stood. In the four full seasons that the Ravens were a team, they never had a winning record, and had won just 24 out of a possible 64 games. It's tough to have rivalries when you're not very good and don't have a lot to play for. Sure, there might be some teams that you hate more than others, but rivalries are a lot fiercer when you have the ability to end someone's season and crush their hopes and dreams, and the Ravens hadn't had a situation quite like that yet. At the time, with the obvious exception of the Cleveland Browns, because the city did not forgive and still has not forgiven Art Modell for what he did, there wasn't really any fierce rivalry with anyone in the AFC Central. The Ravens had no rivalry with the Steelers, or the Bengals, or the Jaguars, or the Titans. It's not like you'd be losing anything of value from a historical rivalry standpoint. Now, maybe there was a selfish reason in there as well as to why Modell volunteered, and that was the fact that the NFC East was kind of a dumpster fire. The AFC Central had the top two teams in the NFL in 1999 in record, with the Jacksonville Jaguars being 14-2 and the Tennessee Titans being 13-3 with those two teams even meeting in the AFC Championship. While the NFC East had just one team finish the 1999 season above 500. However, whatever the true reason was, it seemed like everything was going swimmingly. So just like that, problem solved. The NFL unexpectedly had a team volunteer to make this entire process easier. However, as you know, the Ravens are not in the NFC East. They did not make the switch from the AFC to the NFC as it was the Seattle Seahawks who were the team that did this, 35 years after starting out originally in the NFC. So why did everything fall apart? Well, there was one team that had a pretty strong objection to Modell's request, and you can probably take a wild guess as to who that team might be. Washington objected pretty heavily to the idea of the Ravens being in the NFC East. The distance between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore is a mere 38 miles, with no traffic, you can get there in under an hour. Granted, the idea of there not being any traffic on the way from Baltimore to DC or vice versa is laughable. However, you get the idea. The two cities were extremely close to each other, to the point where their television markets would have interfered with each other in a big way. Baltimore and Washington would have shared a ton of the same secondary markets. And in Washington's eyes, it would have been extremely hypocritical and biased to say that the Texans had to be in the AFC so as not to interfere with the Cowboys, but then allow the Ravens to be in the NFC and interfere in that department. And this is especially true when you consider the fact that the distance between Dallas and Houston is about 240 miles, which is over six times the distance between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. You're telling me the Ravens can play in the same conference and share our television deal, even though we're separated by less than 40 miles, but the Cowboys and Texans can't, even though they're separated by six times the distance? It is an extremely fair and valid argument, and it's the main reason why this idea got shot down. The NFL basically told Modell, We appreciate you being willing to volunteer so we don't have to deal with this problem and don't have to repeat what happened 30 years ago, but we're going to have to pass, because it would just create way too many problems. Today, the thought of the Ravens playing in a division that is not the AFC North seems ridiculous. The thought of splitting up the Ravens Steelers rivalry which might be the best rivalry in the entire AFC, is something that wouldn't even cross anyone's mind, and understandably so. But in 2000, Ravens owner Art Modell was more than willing to throw it all away for the good of the game. Who knows how NFL history plays out if the Ravens are in the NFC East, especially since this move would have probably resulted in the Dallas Cowboys joining the Arizona Cardinals out in the NFC West. Because if Art Modell had his way over two decades ago, the Ravens would have been flying to a completely different conference. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics 
in the description below.